All right. Let's get ready to rock and roll. It's uh, allow me to be frank. Uh, we got a new studio. <laughs> How about that, Matt's Matt's on a hot streak. So is Frank. New studio it looks great. Yes. Uh, it's been incredible, Metron. It's been just incredible. Moment after moment, <clears throat> they never give up. When you think it's over, they find a way to come back again. They've been so resilient, showed so much heart. It's it's incredible. I feel that no matter what, you can feel the franchise has turned uh, turned a corner. Frank, I think, uh, you've also turned a corner where a lot of times you've like said to me and Mikey, if just this one thing happened, then I'll be in a really good mood. You said if they beat one of the two Braves in one of those two games and made the playoffs, you would be appreciative the rest of the way. You've been nothing but appreciative. And last night, I think, I hope resonated in your mind the amount of love you got both in person and online compared to the rare hater. Do you see how happy people are to see you happy? I guess that's what I'm trying to ask. Somewhat. <laughs> sure, man. Yeah, yeah. There's over, uh, <clears throat> you know, a thousand replies saying, congrats. I've never rooted for this man uh, so much for one person. The Mets are amazing. I, I'm so glad for Frank. But, yeah, no, somewhat, for sure. He feels Very like happy. you just have a hard time accepting it. Well, now you're young. Probably. <laughs> well, accept it. <clears throat> So tell the fans what it was like. You went to your first Mets playoff game last night. I know since the last episode, a million things have happened, so we can't unpack all of it. Mm, but first time going into City Field for a playoff game, you got interviewed by NBC going in as if you were the starting pitcher. <laughs> and then you were stopped. I think other than maybe Lindor and Alonzo, I don't know if any other player would get recognized as much as you. I mean, what's that like? It's just it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean. I must have taken at least a couple hundred pictures. Yeah. And uh, it just was just energy, just energy, a, a buzz in that building. You know, um, I, I think back to May this year when we thought it was going to be a, a terrible season. And <laughs> there were 11 games under 500, dead, no energy. They're trying to do all this uh, fake uh, – Clean school bullshit to try to like hype up people. But what did you, what did you see yesterday? You had um, fans actually singing along with walk up songs, like singing along with uh, Lindor's uh, My Girl, singing along with uh, Pete Alonso using uh, uh, the Day to Music Guide, American Pie. I mean, it's, it's, it's been crazy, incredible. It reminded me, Mikey, a lot of. Um our Knicks mosh pits during these last playoff years outside mm -hmm. on 7th Avenue. Yeah. That's how it felt outside and inside of City Field, especially as the Mets took the lead. Just everyone loves everyone. It's like a crazy family atmosphere. I mean, it, it is like the crazy feeling of finally, finally my sports team. Because, I mean, we were talking about this, what, maybe three weeks ago, Frank, how the, the comparables of just the misery, how it's just, all right, Mets Braves again. We're about to go through bullshit again. We're about to lose these two again. It all stopped that day, right, during the Mets hate rally. I feel like that's the day that, that all that put, shit was put to a kibosh. Like the curse I wouldn't was say that the dragon is, is, is dead and buried, but he, he's bleeding. Yeah. And I, I just, again, want to repeat, Clem said it, KFC has repeated it, and everyone should keep echoing it. Frank Fleming has enjoyed this playoff run while Frank yeah. Tank has taken a nap. And <laughs> everyone has loved it. And I, I think it's good for Frank just to see that, like, your wild temper got you famous, but it's not what's going to keep you famous and make you a superstar. People love the other side of you much more. It shows that I can be happy about this team, and people always ask that. God damn right. It, uh, I think that's what I want to get to show us. It shows that, uh, hey, well, like, like, yeah, well. You're right. So many people said if the Mets win, you would still be a miserable prick. And guess what? They were wrong. They were wrong. I mean, I don't know where this is going to lead, but uh, I have confidence – that uh, this offseason is going to be a good one for the Mets, no matter what happens, whether they win the World Series or not. Mm -hmm. I, I have confidence. Uh, I'm starting to believe in God, and you know I'm not religious. <laughs> I mean, that's the effect you're having on me, just so you know. 
God might exist. I, I think, I, yeah, Frank. Um, where was I going to go with that? It's it, yeah. it's it's like a whole different like Mikey's atmosphere. Stung. He doesn't even know Mikey. It's a different, <laughs> different atmosphere that that, that uh, Mikey's broken. I have no idea what to say. There was a little bit of this in the. Uh, there was a little bit of this in the late '90s where the Mets were pretty good. Bobby Valentine, shout out Frank Walks. Yep, shout out Bobby. But they just were missing one key piece. They were very good, very exciting. '99, 2000, very good runs. '99 uh, almost blew it, but had that uh, were able to win that big game in Cincinnati, made it to the NLCS, almost came back from 3-0. Uh, then going to play the Yankees in the World Series, kind of a letdown in the World Series otherwise. Then he had a couple bad years. 2006 should have been something special. That team was better than any other team in baseball that year. They were the best team in baseball all year. And they had some injuries, and they played a Cardinal team that came out of nowhere, and they lost in seven games, and they had, they had the opportunity to beat the Cardinals, and they just didn't do it. And the next year you had to collapse – and it's basically been a calamity since. They had the they caught lightning in the bottle in 2015, made the World Series, but faced a Royal team that was just a bad matchup for them. And now I think it's fair to say this Mets team, and I have no fucking clue about that Cardinals team, is the classic playoff team on the run, super hot, great vibes, great culture, where if you're in the playoffs, I don't give a fuck who you are. You don't want to play the Mets right now. No, you don't want to play the Mets. Now, Frank, can I ask you a question? Um, if they don't win the World Series, if this, if it doesn't go the way that everybody like dream, it, the dream, obviously the expectation, they beat the ex expectation already. If they lose, if they don't make it to the World Series, um, how do you? Is your opinion going to change? Or are you still going to feel good about this team moving forward? I'll feel good about the season. I'll, okay. I'll be sad it's over, and uh, I think that they could. They they just have to build on it, and I think they can. I, mean, I don't even know. Be fair to say you feel great about the season. This is one yeah. of your favorite seasons, yeah. no? Yes. Because like, favorite. and Frank was talking about it with me, Mikey. It's also another one that kind of, in my mind, mirrors the Knicks, but it's staggered by about three or four years. Is the Mets' new organizational structure, it's its yielding much quicker results where the Knicks took a couple years, but you can feel it's a whole different thing now. Yeah, it's cool. I, I go back to May. Competent people in the office. Leon I go, and Gibbs, I go back know. to May. And Frank should have had a little more patience, and he's owning it. He's owning it and saying he was wrong when he thought that, you know, it was just going to be more of the same. But it's truly different. I go back to May, and um, when he hit rock bottom, we were out actually in Milwaukee when he hit rock bottom. It was bad. It was bad. They got swept by the Dodgers, played poorly. Uh, you had uh, – I think it was that May or June 30th? May 30th. I remember that. It was a, that was a bad trip. But go on. They threw the, the, the reliever threw the, uh, the ball, the, the glove in the stands. Uh, they fell 11 games on the budget, rock bottom. They had a team meeting like the next day. And within the next like two three days, they released uh, Omar Navarez. They called up Jose Iglesias. They uh, brought in a new backup catcher in uh, Luis Torrens. They uh, uh, called up Vientos and uh, sent uh, Brett Beatty pack Brett Beatty packing. Mm -hmm. They like really restructured everything and it like. I basically sent a message, hey, you know, we're not going to just like, sit here <coughs> and let you guys just suck. And I think that was a big message. It was very, very special. Um, and uh, in the past, you'd see, uh, in the past, the Mets would not eat the $16 million that they owe Omar Navarez. Right. Because yeah. you got Moneybags McGee running the, the joint, who... Hopefully, I just feel like it's part of the story. I think you guys need to embrace as the Mets continue to ascend the mountaintop. It just, it feels, to me, it feels almost inevitable. Yeah. I, I, and I know you're willing. You've done your part. It's, and I know he's a busy guy and a billionaire, but I think it would be great for the fans. I think it would be too. You see, the thing that, that, that concerned me was 
he came in and he was brash. He said, we're going to win a championship within five years. And in 2021. How many years has it been? It's year four. Okay. In 2021, he came in and uh, he got Lindor. And the team just couldn't hit. They still had the, the Luis Rojas as the manager, and he kind of like is like this mildly manager who just is like all sunshine, rainbows, and lollipops, and it just didn't work. So 2022, they bring in Buck Showalter, they bring in uh, Scherzer, and they won. They, they had ten game lead at the end of at the end of uh, May, and it's not that they really played poorly. It's the Braves just went on an incredible run. But everyone reported as the Mets collapsing. Right. And it just got more and more frustrating. Um, it, there was a stretch in June where the Braves cut the lead from uh, 10 and a half games down to four. And in that stretch, the Mets uh, played slightly below 500 against the Dodgers, Padres, and Astros. <clears throat> while the Braves went uh, on a 14-game winning streak against the Pirates, Oakland A's, and Cincinnati Reds. The three worst teams in baseball that year, by the way. Darkness. So everything the Braves did was based on they got launched by playing like the, the, the soft part of the schedule while the Mets played the hardest part of the schedule. And it just like the rest the last two months, it was I, I couldn't enjoy the Mets season because I just – kept one eye on the Braves, one eye on the Mets. Knowing how old the Mets are, they had this old team with Scherzer. Because I didn't know how long Scherzer could last, and Scherzer's in and out. And the Braves caught them with that sweep in Atlanta, and that was like they they were came into the playoffs with such a letdown, they lost the wild card round. And then last year was just a complete flop. It was... The worst team money can buy part three. And then? And they they, they made the trades, and it was basically like, okay, we're going to take a step back. We're not going to – we're going to focus on the future, not 2024. That was that was like the – And Scherzer was laughing. Yeah. Scherzer laughed at it. Yeah. Hey, how you doing now? What's his first name, Max? Yeah. How you doing now, Max? And And – Something was wrong with that locker last year. He's probably doing fine. He's got a lot of money. Something was something was wrong with that locker. Buck Showalter, Scherzer, Verlander. It just was like a bad mix. And then they didn't. The Mets, I was kind of disappointed they didn't go after Otani harder. But, you know, I think he just wanted to be in L.A. anyway. That should be tampering probably. And then Yamamoto, they, did, they tried to get him, and he went to L.A., and it seemed like the Mets just look like a team that is spinning their wheels. So I was very frustrated, very angry. Yeah, you were right. I think we all know that. Very angry. And I would say Carlos Mendoza, I thought they were literally getting an Aaron Boone, Aaron Boone clone because he's been the Yankees bench coach for five years. So I thought we were getting another Aaron Boone. I mean, look at the Yankees. Aaron Boone, I mean, he... he the fact that he can't get to a World Series with that team? Well, to be fair, in 2003, he did send that team to the World Series. He wasn't a manager. I know. Just trying to show I know ball. Yeah, but that was, uh, that was a generation ago. What a home run that was. Man, eh, it was off a tiring pitcher. Oh, give me a break. It was extra innings to send the Yankees to the World Series Game 7 against the Red Sox. That was epic. That was epic. The old knuckleball or Wakefield. I know. RIP. Ball. I know ball. Um, Mikey, what's it been like for you having worked with Frank for years? I mean, you almost look like you're in a catatonic state of shock hearing Frank speak this way. It is kind of jarring, but I'm with him every day, so I'm starting to get used to it. I mean, this has been the easiest week. By all this? It's been the easiest week of my life. <laughs> and I haven't gotten yelled at once. <laughs> Frank Frank asked me to send him TikToks in the nicest way this weekend. I was like, "Yeah, I got you." Do you get a please? I got a please. I got oh, a, baby! I got uh, a speaking of which, uh, uh, trying to get that email out to me tonight uh, <laughs> for the uh, MKE uh, Brad House. Yeah, I'm not late on it, right? No, I I just need it tonight. 
you know, okay, yeah, he okay. likes giving a little reminders. He'll bring it up on the yeah. stream if you don't. And in the t- and in the TikToks, of course. TikToks, of course. Yeah. If let you're me just... unsure if, whether or not you're missing anything, Mikey, just watch this the live stream because frankly, oh, I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, well, and you'll you'll have all of that right after you get the Frank Walks episode, which will be dropping Friday. So make sure everybody tunes in to uh, to tomorrow's Frank Walks with Bobby. Giants Captain Bobby O'Kerke, correct? Yep. Yep. We're going to have a string of NFL players coming up on Frank Walks. Also, we're going to be basically dropping it weekly um, because we have so much. We don't want to keep all you guys waiting and, like, there's no reason to drag it out. Frank's hot in the streets. So yeah. just keep yep. guests and and, uh, and uh, when we don't have episodes, I'll put out uh, past episodes on Twitter. Ooh. And since we're plugging everything right away, make sure you guys go check out the Barstool store. There's a bunch of new Frank merch, so go check that out. And to be clear, too, that will directly affect how well Mikey can raise his incoming child. Mm-hmm. So obviously, yeah, sure. the overall Frank business, to be clear, Mikey and I don't have any commission or anything like that. But at the end of the year, the more money we bring into the company as a group, ching, 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 the better chance ching, Mikey ching, doesn't ching. have to feed his child dog. Food, <laughs> yeah, which is the current plan. <laughs> yeah, basically. Basically. So I appreciate all the uh, the support and the help from Tanks Army. Um, that being said, Frank, do you want to talk more about the Mets? Do you want to come back to the Mets and talk some football? What do you want to do? Can I, can I mention one thing too, Mikey? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be, uh, really leaning in, uh, with Frank's adamant support, which I'm appreciative of into Nick's coverage for all you Knicks yep. fans out there. Um, it's going to start just very basic, but w- what I want to do, my intention is to give game reports for every single game. I've already started with the preseason. It's very thorough yet concise, and my whole objective is to get away from the lazy NBA analysis we see on television where they just lean into narratives, and you have no fucking clue if these guys even watch He wanted it more. Exactly. Instead, what you're going to see from me are timestamps throughout the game of the key moments, and then basic breakdowns of MVP of the game, X Factor of the game, and then if you miss the game, you take a shit, you read my report, it feels like you watch the whole thing. Yeah, if you guys look at the preseason ones that he already put out now, they're the most detailed, like, bullet point, how the game went down. Uh, it's better than the game cast on ESPN. So just check it out. Appreciate it. And uh, before we get to football, we have to mention that the uh, the Devils went to uh, Czechia. Bless or you. the Czech Republic, whatever yep. you want to call it. I think it's good. You want to call it Czechia now. Well, to be clear, that is what it is called now. Yeah, it's but that's like, what they want to say. That the Russians want to call it Russia, but it's still the Soviet Union. Yeah, but I'm still calling X Twitter, no matter what. They all right, do. Yeah, well, we're all here on Pangea. <laughs> I love Earth. Pangea. Planet Earth. But, uh, the Devils went to Prague and uh, outscored the Buffalo Sabres 72. Uh, Prove once again that Lindy Ruff still sucks. Yep. And uh, home opener is Thursday night. And uh, I made love to a woman in Prague once. Shout out Prague. Prague. When I lived in Europe. And uh, uh, shout out making love, too. Sorry? Shout out making love. Those were the days. Shout out making love. Nothing like it. Um, But but Prague, um, good start for the Devils. And hopefully uh, they'll get their uh, players that are hurt back, like... uh, Brett Pesci, who should be back soon, and Luke Hughes, hopefully be back sometime in uh, November. Shout out Will Compton breaking that story by accident. And uh, the, the one thing I noticed is they definitely look tougher. I think also, um, much like your negativity used to bleed from one team to the other, your Mets positivity is bleeding into Devils positivity, and then the Dolphins are so bad – you're actually not getting angry. You're mocking them, and you're and you're getting laughs out of it. You're literally making yourself laugh over how bad they are, which is like, again, I'm starting to believe in God. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean uh, Chris Greer. Yeah, I mean, all, all all you need is speed. Da 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 da. This is all the you new angry Frank. Speed. Da 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 da. All you need is speed. Yeah. Speed is all you need. I mean, 60 Minutes should be calling me and Mikey every day. Whoever their fucking booker is is really dropping the ball. I mean. This is a tr- this is a metamorphosis. I, I mean, the Dolphins have three uh, all three of the highest paid 
receivers in the NFL? Oh, yeah, it's like if you won a, if you won two, uh, five million dollars and you, you literally <laughs> bought a a, sh- a shed, and then you got three of the nicest cars to park around the shed, <laughs> and you just slept on the floor in the shed, but you always had those cars. I, I mean, the idea. Yeah, yeah, also, yeah, you can't afford gas. The offensive line is just just atrocious. Uh, they, they, the, the quarterback doesn't have time to throw the ball. They let uh, Scott Van Ginko, uh, uh, Andrew Van, they, they let Andrew Van Ginko walk, and um, and they could potentially face a a lawsuit for conspiracy to commit murder if they actually put Tua back on a football field. Oh, he's coming back because to me that's attempted murder. He's coming back. He, that, that, it's criminal. So the Buffalo Bills are now are now complacent. Did you see uh, they last should week? force a really nice payout? The NFL can match whatever. Did you did you see last week the uh, with, with uh, Josh Allen his head bouncing off the turf? That was disgusting. And it's then, not even funny. Then they it's gave him up. they gave him smelling salts and said, oh. He, and I don't care what Josh Allen him. says when you're when you're in a competitive. And you're when you're in the fire, you're always going to want to go back in, much less when you've lost your marbles and you don't even know what's going on. These players should have zero say, zero say. It should be a doctor. And it, when the eye test is that obvious, my God, even just for optics, he should not have been put back in. Crazy. They don't give a fuck about the players. No, they don't. They don't. And these players to fucking London and in and, and Brazil and they Mexico. Oh, the field sucks. Ah, oh, well. We're making money. They don't give a flying fuck. They're all replaceable parts. Um, yeah, they are. They are. That's why there's a draft every year. Um, all right. <clears throat> we have Falcons, Buccaneers. Uh, we'll go into last week. Uh, just break it down, the scores. and That was a uh, – I didn't get to see much that game. Just, uh, the match were playing the Brewers in uh, game three. Alonzo hitting the home run. But that was a fantastic game. Yeah. That was great, great. Won a lot of money that game that day. Um, all right, let's go to the Jets Vikings in London. The Sela la la la. Later. La la la. It's gotta be cool to be a Aaron starting Rogers. quarterback, play terribly, lose, and then fire your coach. <laughs> he is the he's the best. They wouldn't even let him say goodbye to. Uh, Dude, he wanted to say he wanted to like address the players. They basically he said, "Get your stuff, get the hell out of here." And they escorted him out of the building. And that was definitely Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is the president of the Jets. And I love yeah, that. I He's such an asshole. I love it. I love it. Seeing it not as a like, it's just so blatantly. It's he pal- is it's an, pal- it's pal- He is an asshole. Arrogance. Aaron Rodgers is an a, a, an unlikable. Asshole. Yeah, I mean, he was going to get fired well, maybe yeah. like th- yeah. three weeks from now. He was probably going to get fired three weeks from now, right? Yeah, like especially after you lose to the Bills and then you got a, a tough well, schedule. The thing, is, the thing is, though, is Aaron Rodgers likes Nathaniel Hackett. That, yeah. And Hackett yeah, he loves him. Him. And he got first. Hackett didn't even become the head coach for now. So that's crazy. Well, supposedly, Salah wanted to fire Hackett and Rodgers likes Hackett. So. <laughs> Not that smart than the president trying to fire his friend. <laughs> this Hackett was the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach in Green Bay before being a terrible head coach in Denver. He was ass. Yeah, he I remember. Was, okay. you remember my nickname for him? Uh, can't hack it. Daniel can't hack it. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Mikey. That was uh, one of my uh, five straight losses in the Survivor Pool Week One. They were. Uh, 20, they were 15 point favorites at home against the Seahawks in week one on Monday Night Football. Got crushed. And um, with. Um, Frank talks about losing these survivor pools like it's losing children. Like he, he the, I look in his it eyes. Might, might, as well be. Korea, might as well be. In the Korean War. It's like you lost a survivor. Every, only one guy wins in a survivor pool. But I've never made it past week one. I know, but like it's that means that. I've never should, made it past week one. You should take, insurance. You, you should take life insurance on your. Uh, I always take like the most obvious favorite. Well, you took the Bengals this year. The Bengals almost always right. start You can't be a square. The Bengals, the Patriots won worse since the NFL. The Patriots haven't won since. But did you hear what they I said? Lost the Bengals the... do always start slow. But they, I, I so that wasn't like a lock of a pick. That's all I'm saying. I mean, it made sense. The, the Patriots actually suck. That one, Frank, actually, you can't be a square. That one was the most common pick. Yeah. No. The most common. I understand. I'm saying it made sense as a pick, but it also like, starting to be had the Bengals always start slow. But, it should have been that much of a shot. But, but I didn't realize I didn't realize that the Bengals are just like that. They, 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 that that coach is about to be fired. 
Next game, uh, Bengals 38, Ravens 41. The Bengals' defense is just non-existent. Yes. yes. Simple as that. Um, yeah, they, they are so bad. Joe Burrow's fine. Joe Burrow, after struggling the first few weeks, is finding himself. And the Bengals' defense is just ass. It's yeah, always going to be the question of the, the plays Lamar made in that game. Can he do that in a playoff game? Or no. He no, he cannot. He cannot. He cannot. He gets defense. Is he just because like, the problem with Lamar is, is everybody in the NFL right now is going about 70%, 80% besides Lamar. Lamar is going 100%. Now, when the playoffs come, his 100% stays at 100% or only goes down to 90%. Everybody else turns their gears up to 100% in the playoffs, and then Lamar looks like playoff Lamar, and he's always trash. Yeah, he yeah, uh, the game against the Texans Jackson becomes fumbles McGee. Yeah, right, what's the next one. We got a bunch of games because we still Colts Jags. Uh, Jags thirty four, or yeah, Jags thirty four. Colts. They almost lost that game. They were both trying to lose. Well, the the Colts are injured. The Colts are banged up. The Jaguars just suck. Dolphins win fifteen to ten against the Patriots on the road. One of the most peewee amateur fucking hour football you, you games. You don't want to watch ever. that. You don't want to watch I don't even know if the Dolphins won. Just the other team lost. Let, let me put it this way. The uh, the actors in the uh, Aaron uh, Hernandez movie miniseries. They probably play better. They probably could be a better team than the current Patriots. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, next game, another. Uh, this one was just a fucking blowout. Uh, Commanders 34, Browns 13. I don't know how many times we got to say it, but all right, um, uh, sucks. I don't, I, I'm not going to disparage Caleb Williams just yet. I'm not going to say that he's a bust, but I'm going to say this. Man, talk about the Bears. No, he's saying you should have taken every Jaden oh, Daniels. I, I don't think so. Is him, he's wow. great. I he's he is him. He is completing like 80% of his passes. They commanders don't fucking punt. They, they, I think they're averaging like two punts per game. They're putting up 30 points a game. It's like, you remember he ASU is, you never punt? He That's is, he is him. Club yeah, that for PFT. Jaden Daniels is him. I've seen enough. This guy is going to be. Big star. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can we go get uh, his schedule? He beat the beat the Bucks. Ooh, wow, listen to the fucking bitter motherfuckers. He beat the Giants. Wow, he blew out the Giants. Holy cannoli! We'll see how this. Week. We'll see this weekend, Mikey. They the they, Bengals, the one and four Bengals. Wow, you got to give them some credit as a rookie, man. It doesn't. The you commander's know, defense isn't good either. Now, the way Frank framed that was like a personal attack on Caleb. But forget about Caleb. Just stand alone. No, I know. I'm just, I'm just looking at the schedule. All oh. right. So, they play <laughs> the Giants. Now, let's look at the Bears' schedule and let's look at his numbers. The one and four Bengals. The – oh, the uh, – the Cardinals and the Browns, wow, fucking dominating. Well, they're, dominating. Just... <laughs> they're blowing teams out. All right, uh, next game, Texans, uh, Josh Allen shit the bed, uh, Bills 20. Yeah, we already talked about this. Josh Allen shouldn't disgrace. have been allowed on the field at the end of the game. And he shouldn't play next week. Stephon, well, they're, they're, they're playing the Jets this week, so that should be interesting. All right, next game, we have the Bears 36, uh, the Panthers 10. Like, uh, we also have Caleb that. Williams, 304 yards and two touchdowns. Just wanted to throw that out there in case anybody. Well, uh, good. good. He, he should do that. Yeah, well, that's, what, like that's what he should do. We want him to do well. I mean, I'll speak for myself. I want him to do well. Oh, no, I know. I know. I'm just I am I'm, not rooting against him. I, I I'm not saying that, that, that Caleb Williams is not going to be good. I'm just saying that he's not him. Jaden Daniels just looks like, wow. Yeah. If you see the trajectory, though, from week one to week five, if you look at the stat board, like on how his stats spend, it's like. Yeah, no, it looks like he's getting better. Yeah. As I just talked shit about the schedule, he played the worst team in the league. Yeah, I know. That's why I said you should review the Bears' schedule, too. <laughs> um, all right. We have the Broncos at Raiders. Uh, or I'm sorry. The Broncos at home versus the Raiders. The Broncos just blew out the Raiders 34 to 18. Yeah, well. Uh, all because of the jerseys. Amazing jerseys. The, the Raiders just don't have a quarterback. Yeah, for the jerseys. Sucks. How great were um, the jerseys? Those are the jerseys I grew up with. This one was go. a close one. 49ers, 23 at home versus the Cardinals, 24. That is now two 10-point fourth-quarter leads that the 49ers have blown this year. I don't care about how injured you are. 
you can't blow a 10 point lead if you're the 49ers. I have a feeling it feels like this last stretch of 49ers kind of always being a Super Bowl contender. It feels like the window started. The yeah, they're, they're, they're a little banged up. Uh, they're Brock, getting older. Like, Brock, Brock, not Brock, but the other guys are getting older. Uh, they, they really miss Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. All right. Uh, Packers 24, Rams 19. They only beat them by five. The Bears beat them by six legs last oh, week. Just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, well, you got two mediocre teams. What can I say? Jordan Love, does he deserve that contract? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't they, think so either. But just uh, uh, just worry about that. Just, just know this. In 10 years, Jordan Love will be uh, on the Jets. Yes. Yep. Yep. And then uh, you think Aaron Rodgers is going to the Vikings next year? Uh, probably not. Sam Darnold. Year after. Better. I think he's got two, two games. Yeah, one more year. Seven win seasons. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold's now better. Darno, Sam Darnold, Samuel Darno. All right, uh, Giants twenty nine, Seahawks twenty. Well, uh, remember when the Seahawks were three and zero? I remember. Do you remember? Yeah, Pepper oh. Ridge Farms. Remember. <laughs> Ultimate <laughs> example of like don't overreact to the first couple weeks, and this also. I would call that the Mr. Irrelevant game in terms of just everyone being irrelevant. The, that uh, one the Giants, the, Giants, the, the Giants blocked the uh, field goal and returned it all the way for a touchdown at the end of the game. Yeah, well, the Dolphins tried to do a field goal and they couldn't even catch the snap. Sunday night, uh, Justin Fields is so ass, just uh, so everybody knows again. Steelers 17, but Dax also ass. Cowboys. Dax Prescott tried to lose that game. He did. He had Twice. two turnovers in the, in the red zone. Uh, a, a missed field goal, a block field goal, and somehow the Steelers couldn't put them away. Uh, yes. I, I think it's I, I, yeah, I think it's time to go to Russell. I would love to see Dak's career Wait. stats compared to Romo. It feels like he's like literally Romo two point oh. Yes, like he has really solid games. Yes. He'll win like ten games in a year, yeah. and then they fall right on their face. In the That's exactly yeah. what he is. We need yeah. we need Justin to start at least four more games, though, Frank. For me, you know that you know that right or no? No. Well, if, you get a if, he, if he starts fifty-one percent of the snap or the the uh, the games. games, we get a fourth round pick instead yeah, of a sixth sense. round pick. Because then it's no. too trading. Yeah, the but if he continues to stick it up, we're going to see uh, Russell Wilson out there very soon. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then Monday night, uh, fuck, where'd it go? But we all know what happened. The Saints yeah. got their teeth kicked in. Five. The Saints kind of hurt now. Uh, the, 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 there's another team's two and zero. Oh, uh, Awesome start. That's all forgotten about now. All right, let's go to this week. We're gonna just do a pick 'em. Go. We'll go up and down, and then we'll go into our picks, and then ask the tank. Does that work? Yeah, rip it. All right, let's rip it. 49ers, Seahawks, Niners, Niners, Niners. Jags, Bears, Bears, Jaguars. We stink in London, Frank. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Bears. Going Bears. We're gonna change that narrative today. The Jaguars. The Jaguars play their best football. In they London. love London. They love London. In many ways, uh, the Jaguars, the Jaguars, deep down, the ownership, they, they now got commitment for a new uh, stadium in Jacksonville. They're waiting for the Super Jet to finish protocol so they, they can. Have the the Jaguars hours. almost want to play in London. Yeah. They want to be. They, they want to be the team that moves to London. Two-hour jet. Um. All right. Uh. We have Texans, Patriots. Patriots are at home. Patriots are ass. Texans. Texans are going to win that game. Commanders, Ravens, they're actually playing a good team. Ravens. 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 Uh, Browns, Eagles. 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 Watson. Yeah, these are two, like, bad teams. Like, they're supposed to be good teams, but they're both bad. I feel like, uh, yeah. Well, the, the Browns have got to pull the plug on Watson. They have to. they got to pull the plug on Watson. That, it, they should cool. just fire them, too. Yeah, they should wave them. Uh, Cardinals, Packers. Packers are at home. Packers. Kind of like the Cardinals. I like the Cardinals too this game. Um, Bucks, Saints. Saints are at home. Buccaneers. Bucks. Uh, we have uh, Colts, Titans. Colts. Uh, yeah, the Titans are hard. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take the Titans on that one. Uh, Chargers, Broncos. Chargers, Broncos. Chargers. I'm taking the Chargers, yeah. Uh, Steelers, Raiders. Steelers. Steelers. 
Lions. Oh, okay, I'll take the uh, I'll take the Steelers. Lions. Cowboys. Lions. Cowboys. What? Yep. Sunday three o'clock game. I'll take the Lions. Uh, Falcons. These Panthers. Are the games the Cowboys win. You're when right, you Frank. It's America. Yeah, they'll, yeah. yeah. they'll have that one. They'll have that one good game right. of month where they beat a good team. That's just one. They'll win like five in a row, and everybody. Like, oh, yeah. they're Super Bowl contenders, and then yeah. Uh, Falcons, Panthers, pa- Panthers are at home. Falcons. Well, I don't care where they're playing. Fly, Falcons, fly. Stinky Sunday night game. Giants at home versus the Bengals. Ugh. Bengals. <laughs> Bengals. Uh, Daniel Jones is like 1 in 14 in primetime games. Burrow just needs to get them like 63 points. So just nine. <laughs> Bills, uh, Jets. Jets are at home. If Allen plays Bills... Bills are going to win that game. If Allen doesn't play Bills. Bills are going to win that game. And the crowd's going to be going, boom! <laughs> All right. Um, let's get into our picks. I'm going to bring DeFrisco on because he's also just going to throw out his picks as well. So, bang, bang. What's up, DeFrisco? DeFrisco! Hey, guys. How you doing? What's buddy? up, fellas? Good to see you, man. Fantastic. Hey, what's up? Do it's, you know, you know it's good to be seen. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I sent it to Frank yesterday. I'll put it out. Uh, but I can pull it up ahead of you too. I just want to see. No, uh, I know. Hey, congrats, Frank. Big win yesterday. To Frisco, I don't think your Wi Fi is good, brother. <laughs> oh. You're coming in super choppy. You're good now. I think you're fine now. All right. The, uh, here's the records uh, overall. Mikey Betts is uh, 28 and 20, 28 and 24 and 3 overall. Nice. On 28, 26 and 1 overall. Nice. DeFrisco's 27, 27 and 1 overall. Fuck. And uh, Jenks, you're 25 and 30. And uh, that's basically because you are 12 and 18 in college football. Hey, you give me the push for Nebraska? Fade me in college football, people. No, I gave you Nebraska. Minus six and a half? Yes. Let's get into the picks. All right. Let's do the picks. All right. Uh, last goes first. I go last. To Frisco, you want to rip? No, you're up. You're last, loser. God <laughs> damn it. It's actually called the feeble fucker, so fucking learn your goddamn terminology. All right. You're right. Picks. Sorry. Again, I recommend fading me in NCAA. What's my NFL record? Uh, it's about 500. Excellent NFL record, so definitely, you know, <laughs> you know uh, follow me. I love that. Love that. NCAA, I'm going to take ASU. Because they never punt, or at least that's what they used to say. USC plus five and a half, WVU, West Virginia, where I love it. Uh, plus three, Rutgers for my man, LeGrand, minus two and a half. And Bowling Green, minus three, because I used to use that subway stop. Like that. I like that Jenks's college picks are just like people that he knows. Yeah. <laughs> like. Uh, yeah, I one time visited this school on a Thursday, so I'm going to pick them. <laughs> I got laid here. I'm picking this. Right? Yeah. This dog. <laughs> Nothing All to right. do with the actual sport of football. No. All right, I I'll go next. I college football much, so uh, please don't want to take my picks. Oh, wait, no. No, I'm next. Yeah, stinky. Okay. Uh, I got Purdue. Uh, will cover 19 and a half against Illinois. Illinois will win, but Purdue will cover. Rutgers minus two and a half. Uh, Oregon plus three at home. They shouldn't be dogs. Oklahoma plus 15. And, you know, I am all in on the Boise State train. Boise State minus 20 and a half. All right. Uh, that running back, I from Genty, what's his name? He is really cool. I'm going to take uh, Alabama right. minus 21 against South Carolina. After that loss last week, they have to come out some fire. Square. Um, Wisconsin plus two and a half against Rutgers. Chalk. Uh, USC plus five and a half against Penn State. No comment, Jenks? I ran out of good. Well, that was all I had. We had the same pick. I needed five, but I only had two. Uh, Ohio State minus three against Oregon. Ole Miss minus three and a half against LSU. And that's it. All right. Why don't you put your thing on? Uh, let's see. You're a fucking bookie, Frank? Why you got the paper like that? 
It, it does look like a bookies, yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys that slip in? It's here. just a uh, just a little uh, notepad uh, for my calendar. Yeah, yeah that you pad. fold, put a little cash in, and hand to a guy. Frank has to say his picks in code. <laughs> All right, uh, we got. He's uh, gonna burn it after. Uh, I got Notre Dame minus twenty three and a half. Stanford's yeah. ass. Yeah, ass. I am taking. Uh, and this is a high spread. I just think Oklahoma kind of sucks this year. So I'm taking Texas minus 14. And that's kind of kind – of, I can't believe that spread. But spread. I think Texas is going to kill them. LSU plus three and a half against Ole Miss. I am taking Washington plus two and a half. I think they're playing Iowa, if I'm not mistaken. And my upset special. Yeah. Ooh. Quack. Quack, quack, quack. Oregon. I am taking Oregon. Oregon? Oregon. Oregon? Oregon. Okay. <laughs> Oregon plus three at home against Ohio State. Interesting Oregon pick. <clears throat> okay. Do I go first again? Yep. Great. Did we NFL, take, did we I'll take Oregon. Three, three, minus six and a half. I'm going to take the Lions <laughs> minus one and a half. The Chargers minus three. Lions. I picked twice because I'm an idiot. Bills minus two. And give me whoever's playing the Dolphins. They're bye week this week. Damn it. Give me whoever's bye playing the Titans. <laughs> Who's playing the Titans? Uh, I think it's Colts. Give me the Colts. Colts. Colts in the uh, I think it's minus one. They'd be minus ten. Yeah, whatever. Other side of the Titans. So I'm laying points on everything. All right. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, very chalky. Yeah. That's uh, all right. NFL uh, Bears with another line to another team. Minus two and a half. I don't care if the wind is safe. I can hear you. To Frisco, just. Uh, I can hear you. We, we uh, can't hear you, brother. I'm going to read his picks. What the yeah. hell? All right, go ahead. Try now. No, I'll read them for you. Just stay, stay pretty. Uh, NFL, he has Bears minus two and a half. They're going to go in London and, and kill them, he said. Um, the Texans minus seven. This should be a smoke show. <laughs> uh, Cardinals plus five because fuck the Packers. Broncos plus three because I'm an idiot and I don't know how good the Chargers are. And then Falcons minus six because they're playing the Panthers. Right? That's what you do you that for your own picks too? Denver, Denver, Denver might have the best defense in NFL. All right. I got the Jaguars. The Chargers plus are very average. Jaguars plus two and a half against my Bears, eight thirty game. Ew. Hey, I didn't say we're gonna lose. So we're gonna win by one or two. Um, Ravens minus six and a half against the Commanders, because uh, yeah, he needs to be humbled. Um, the Bucks minus three and a half against the Saints because I hate the Saints. Even though it's always a close game with these two, I'm just gonna take the Bucks minus three and a half. Chargers plus three because I don't care about the Broncos defense. And then the Falcons minus six against the Panthers because they are the Panthers. All right. I am starting off with the London Jaguars plus two and a half over the Bears. Don't like how you're taking uh, the Cowboys plus three against the Lions. Now, I don't know if they're going to win. But I'm taking the Commanders plus six and a half against the Ravens. I think that's going to be a field goal game. I am taking the Bengals minus three and a half against the Giants. And I'm taking the... Uh, what the fuck did you say? The Giants. Okay, just checking. Go on. And uh, I remember... Uh, I'll finish it off. Oh, boy. The Bills minus two and a half against the Jets. Uh, Can't set them up. This. In 1987, tell me, guys. In 1987, they had the uh, the scab games. They made a movie to replace this based off of it. And so, uh, after one week of uh, no NFL, the NFL season resumed in week four with scabs. And the scabs played two games. Some and more and more players crossed the picket line every week. So by week three, the union was broken, and uh, they returned uh, in week four. In the, in the, the, uh, after three weeks, you know, there's like three scab games for most teams. Some teams, the Cowboys completely crossed the uh, pick line and then they lost to the scab uh, Redskins. Embarrassing. 
so anyway, uh, I remember the Star Ledger sports section, when it, which was great back then, had the headline, tonight it's the San Francisco Phony Niners against the Giants. I'm so glad I asked. <laughs> I couldn't have lived without that information. <laughs> I just you, remember professor. it. Thank you, the Professor. The Phony Niners Thank you, against professor. the Giants. Heard you the first time, Polly Walnuts. <laughs> uh, Mikey, we got any ass to take? Hey, you hear that? <laughs> Yeah, we do. Frank, what's the worst game day giveaway you've ever gotten? That's from Cliff Martino. Shout out, Cliff. Cliff. The worst game day giveaway that I ever got. Ugh, I'm trying to remember. There have been some funny There's ones. There's been some They've, bad ones. There have been games where we've gone in, and it's the player that Frank hates the most. Like I, but there might have been a Vogelback giveaway, I think, maybe last year. I'm just trying to remember. Yeah. The problem is Frank gets so much shit at every fucking game. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's like my. I'm just thinking my head scrambled. <laughs> you got so much memory overload. Memory overload. You need to clean up your apartment. <laughs> yes, I do. It all comes back to. <laughs> yes, I do. Frank's been trying to clean his apartment for 15 months. Uh, Might be this weekend. <laughs> Frank, who is your favorite Atlanta Brave of all time? I know you hate them, but uh, there's got to be one from a well, baseball. Probably be a bad pitcher or something that the Mets shell. Paul Asimacher. Bad pitcher that the Mets shelled. Yeah, and he was ass. There you go. If Frank wins, will he get a tattoo? Uh, actually, we talked about it today, Mikey. We're all getting tattoos if the Mets win the World Series. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get a tattoo if the Mets. I know you will. I'm just yeah. letting you know we all are together. Yeah, cool. To Frisco, you're into. All right. No, I can't do that. Yeah. There's no chance I'm getting a Met tattoo. Well, I'm rooting for the Mets and I'm rooting for Frank, but I would never get a Mets well, tattoo. Well, they grimace on our chest. I'll, I'll get a Grimace tattoo. We I, get, I could get a Grimace. I can get on board with a Grimace tattoo. I, I, I'll get a Grimace tattoo. That's yes, why you shouldn't say no so quick. All right. We will put out a public serv- uh, public notice that we are all getting Grimace tattoos if they win the World Series. That's fair. Tank's army is getting. Grimace. I'm going to get a tank tattoo with Grimace driving it. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. A note to Frank and the Mets. I like that. All right. Um, what's your ide- what is your ideal devil season this year? Win the cup, yeah. A good long playoff run. Why not win the that's cup? Ideal would be, that would, yeah, that would be ideal. <laughs> like the definition of ideal. But I, I expect a good playoff run. Yeah, that's the minimum. What's the most fun Tank Cooks to film that you remember? You have so much fun every fucking time. Yeah. I think the weirder it is, and the less familiar Frank is, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. The more fun you have, you love trying new shit. Yep. You know, uh, East Wellington was still one of the. In the blanket. Or for example, if he gets a recipe that leads to him buying a new kitchen appliance, which he can then show off and debut and use for the first time, like his egg cracker or his can crusher, that sort of shit. That's heaven for Frank. Oh, this is a good question from Joey Shea, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. He said, "Is the Queen's crew still around? Are they still around?" The other day, they're barely around. They've been phased out. Do you think that they are the? Uh, they're also a, a small contributing factor. No. Okay. All We're right. All that's positive vibes. We don't even get. Well, that that is that is true though, Frank. If you guys win the World Series this year, you can't change anything. You got to keep the Queen's crew around forever. Yeah. As long as they're in the background. In the, as long as they're in the background. Yeah. Fair. The pageantry. The pageantry. All right. All right. Let's see. Wait. 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 Frank Fleming, ladies and gentlemen. One second. Well, I can change. You can change. Rocky Four was a true story. All right. See everyone next week. Hold on, don't stop. I can see the world. <laughs> You know, you guys these days, Mikey, because vibes will never ever be this low again. These are great times. Any King of New York shirt if they come back on sale? I think we sold out. I think we're back up. Oh, good. Buy the yeah. King of New York shirt. More merch coming. Feed Mikey's child. <laughs> Feed my kids. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>